Doug Levi here, Strategic Insurance Services, coming to you with another training that uh, actually came a result. A lot of these trainings, off, uh, a lot of times, are coming a result as conversations that I'm having, uh, which is great um, with with new team members or existing team members. And so, one of the things I want to highlight on today is working with a referral partner in real estate or mortgages. I'm actually going to make this a little bigger as I'm talking here. So, um, just to be clear, people in real estate and mortgages can be fantastic referral partners for you. In my career, and when I say that, you know, I've, I've been in the business 18 years, I've owned the agency 14, and uh, historically speaking, realtors and mortgage people have been some of the best referral partners. Um, we tell people this too, you only need a handful of really, really good ones, and it's going to make a big swing in your, in your production, in your numbers. So... <clears throat> The uh, the flip side is there's some some pitfalls you've got to watch out for, and so that's what I was talking to this new advisor through the other day, and I wanted to just do a video on this. So again, the kind of the context here is working with a referral partner in real estate or mortgages. So I've got everything up on the screen here. I'm going to um, go through them one by one right now. So the first part is just build rapport. Right, this is sales 101. I don't care who you're talking to. Kind of like your grandma would teach you. It's always good to be nice to people. So you want to build rapport with that person. Uh, and it depends what the relationship already is. Some people are sourcing relationships. Uh, in other words, this gentleman was telling me this is someone he's known for, for years. So obviously he's already got a relationship. You've known someone for years. They're a friend. That's going to be a little bit different than you're approaching someone new. And again, part of our strategy is approaching new mortgage, realtor, and other types of centers of influence to get you more leads. Either way, talking about rebuilding rapport, that can look about uh, their family, what they like to do, hobbies, sports, current events. There's lots of ways to do this. You have to determine their style, your style, what works best. Spend a little time to build that rapport. Speed builds trust. This is one of the biggest ones. And I will tell you this, there are colleagues of ours in the industry that focus almost solely on working with mortgage and uh, realtors. And I can tell you over the years, myself hearing from mortgage and realtors, a lot of times they want it, they want it fast. And uh, even though fast isn't always accurate, there is an initial response that happens when you overwhelm someone in a positive way with how quick you are. So the takeaway is you hear from them, you want to respond quickly. They send you a lead or even if it's just, hey, quote this for me, this name and this address, and you don't have all the information, do what you can to look things up on property appraiser and put your best estimate together just from what you know to get the conversation rolling. Again, speaking to this uh, agent the other day, their advisor the other day, I was saying, you want to think about just advancing the ball, right? Like football here, just advancing the ball. You may not get your final wish here, uh, but you want to just start the conversation and advance the ball. So speed builds trust. That's a great concept in sales, and it certainly is your establishing a referral relationship. I also kind of put focus on the big picture, not bogged down by the details. And yes, those of you that know me well, I'm definitely very much a salesperson. Salespeople in general are very much big picture, not details. There's ditches on both sides of the road, and I know some of you out there are very detailed. Uh, you do not want to be hung up by analysis paralysis. Uh, well, is the bathroom standard or above grade or custom? Is this kitchen, uh, you know, premium or luxury? And, and again, understand, yes, you have to understand these things roughly, but my point being, don't let yourself get overly caught up with minor details, especially when you're just starting the process you'll have time down the road, which leads me to what you really want to be able to do is get in touch with the client. You really, in my opinion, you want to be get, and get in touch with the end user. There's a few ways to look at this, but I would encourage you to think about in a transaction or a situation where you've got a realtor or mortgage broker referring you business, you've got two clients. One is them. They're a client because they're your referral partner. In some ways, you can make the case that they're more important than the client because they can send you ongoing so you want to very much walk this tightrope of making them happy and working with them, uh, but also understanding that the client that they're referring you to is the ultimate person that has to say yes. They're the person that's going to pay that's, that will then turn into a premium that will turn into commission dollars for you, right? So you may say something like this. You get a referral early, okay? And you may say something like, 
the mortgage broker, let's say his name is John. Hey John, thanks so much for the referral. Happy to reach out to the client direct. A few pieces of additional information I need. I will keep you in the loop with any and all proposals. This will allow me to help the client and help take this off your plate. Because I know you've got a lot going on with the closing. What's the best number for them? Now, maybe you say that in an email, maybe that is a phone call, maybe that's sort of an abbreviated text, but trying to get the idea that you're trying to say, look, ideally I need to talk to the client because truly you do need to get some more info. There's no doubt about that, right? We can run proposals all day, but you know, if the clients had five claims and you know, pit bulls bouncing and trampolines in the backyard, that's going to change who we're going to write with. Okay. A lot of agents don't take the time to do that. I think that's also a mistake too, because you miss out on the opportunity to build a relationship with the client, which again, could be a client that could be with you for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And oh, by the way, be someone that could refer you other business, right? So I want you to think about both sides there. And this is, again, this is a more nuanced play. This becomes a little more of a higher level sales acumen uh, where you have to try and be able to put the position, the person who's referring it to you comfortable to say, okay, this person knows what they're doing. They sound confident. They're going to help my client not screw up. That's what they're thinking. And ultimately get this deal done for me being the mortgage or realtor person so that the mortgage or real estate person gets their commission. That's what they're thinking in their head. So you have to be able to position yourself in a way that makes them comfortable with that. Now, I would suggest if you say that to them or email something like that and they say, no, 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 just work with me for now, I wouldn't keep pushing. There are some referral people that are very close to the vest. They almost feel like they're protecting their client, okay? But just understand at the end of the day, there has to be that handoff at some level. The sooner you can do that, the better, okay? Understanding the difference between loan amount and replacement cost estimate. This is big too. Sometimes what you'll see, and again, this is more traditionally when you're working with the loan officer or banker, where they will come to you and say, uh, the loan amount's $450,000. We need a $450,000 worth of coverage. That is not accurate. Now, they may be well-meaning. They may be thinking that they need that based on whatever they're getting from the bank, but that is not how the banking and insurance system works. Here's why. The policies that the banks have, and when I say policies, I mean like their forms and their conditions, their warranties and covenants will state that they want insurance at replacement cost. Okay. That is ultimately what the bank truly needs to be satisfied. Now, I know there are times, and I've been in this business long enough, where there's times where banks have stuck their foot in the ground and, oh, we needed this, we needed this, we need this. And I will tell you this, you'll have to make a time to judgment calls and decisions based on where it's at, whether it just makes sense okay to say if the replacement cost, for example, was on the building was 430 and they want 450 because that's the loan amount, that's pretty close. Now, the one I was speaking with uh, one of our advisors the other day, I think the replacement cost was, let's say, $250, and they wanted $450. That's way off. And what you ultimately are doing is way over insuring your client with coverage they'll never see, even if their house burned to the ground, because the carrier is not going to pay more than it truly costs to rebuild. So the strategy here is a few things. Number one, in a nice way, trying to explain to the mortgage officer, a loan person, what the scenario is. I always believe in word pictures and examples. That's how I think. That's how I try and share and teach you guys a lot. Here's an easy one to think about. I could live on Clearwater Beach, right? So Clearwater Beach, arguably one of the nicest beaches in the world, gets rated, you know, wherever you're listening to or watching this, it gets rated by USA Today and all this kind of stuff is, you know, top beaches in the world, right? So I could have a property on Clearwater Beach that's 500 square feet. Okay, follow me here. It's an old, old shack that's 500 square feet that may be worth a million dollars because of the land value. It may appraise at a million dollars. In theory, if someone wanted to buy that home because the land comes with it, it would cost a million dollars. In reality, a 500, a 500 square foot shack does not cost a million dollars to rebuild. We know that. Now, that's an extreme example that I'm using to point, point out the difference between the value of the home, including the land, and the replacement cost on the structure. Remember, we never pay for dirt. The policy does not insure your land. If your home is totally destroyed, you still have your land. 
traditionally, right? I, again, I get, okay, there could be an earthquake, so pull different things like that. But the policies, long story short, ensure the structure. So you got to try and explain that to the mortgage person. And sometimes that's going to be hard for them. But you, you really want to understand the, the replacement cost estimate and the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the loan amount. They're not the same thing, okay? I put follow-up. This is critical in anything in sales. And then, again, if your referral partner is not giving you access to the client just yet, you inherently are going to have to follow up with that mortgage person. This is where we go from the beginning. The sooner you can get your foot in the door with the client, the better off you are. And then you can keep both in the loop. And then we did another video on this a few weeks ago, but just to reinforce this, we just put use pets as touch point, right? So what's pets? Phone, email, text, social media. Ways that you can be engaging with your referral partner. Oh, by the way, your client. I've started doing this more recently. Now, I'm not a huge social media guy. I'm not on a ton. We've used it more for our Facebook group and things like that. I personally looked at Facebook almost as my journal, right? It's where we kind of track our life, post stuff. Yeah, there's family that follows us and likes that. But, but my point is, certainly there's a lot of people that do. And you could say when you're dealing with a client or a prospect, you could look to connect with them on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever other means you have that you're on in terms of connection. Okay. So again, referral partners, they can be great. Working with real estate and mortgages, they can be an excellent source. I would encourage you to think about these things as you're building those relationships. So if you have any questions, I can help you in any way. Let me know, guys. And as always, dream big and make it happen. Have a great day.